I know, I know. I'm a hopeless case. You are not hopeless. He is not hopeless. He just doesn't have anyone to help him like the girls do. Maybe you could help him, Mr. Frank. I'm sure his father is. Not me. He won't listen to me. <laughs> what do you say, Peter? Oh, Mr. Frank, you're an angel. I don't know why I didn't meet you before I met that one over there. <laughs> <laughs> Show me which chapter you're on. You listen to Mr. Frank Peters. Mr. Frank is a highly educated man. Aren't things hard enough without you sprawling all over the place? You know, if you didn't smoke so much, you wouldn't be so ill-tempered. Am I smoking? Do you see me smoking? Don't tell me you used up all those cigarettes already. One package! Meep only brought me one package! It's a filthy habit. It's a good time to break Well, stop it. You're smoking up all our money. You know that, don't you? Will you shut up? What are you staring at? I just never heard grown-ups quarreling that before. I thought that only children quarreled. And it wore off when you grew up. This isn't a quarrel. It's a discussion. And I never heard children so rude before. I? Rude? I don't know how you can say that way. Anne, would you bring me my knitting, please? I must remember to ask me to get me some more wool. Oh, I have some library books for her to return. And I need some hairpins and some soap. Please, me, get me some biscuits. Some tea. Some starch. A movie star magazine. Tell us all the latest news, me. It's a wonder me has a life of her own. Did you know that she's engaged to someone called John? She's crazy about him. She's terrified that the Nazis will take him away. <coughs> he's working for in Germany. That's what they're doing with all the young Dutchmen these days. They just pick them up right Suppose away. you try keeping still for just <laughs> five minutes. Talk, talk, talk. Chatter, chatter, chatter. It's a wonder we haven't been discovered and shot. Why do you have to show off all the time? Why can't you be quiet like your sister Margo and be a good girl? Not me. I'm going to be remarkable. I'm going to Paris. Really? I'm going to be a famous writer or singer or dancer someday. Oh, my God. My coat. My beautiful first stole. I'm sorry. Do you know how much my father paid for this stole? Look at it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. I could kill you. Petronella. You can't behave like this. It was an accident. Anyone can have an accident. I'm not just talking about the coat. I know we're all living under great stress, but you don't hear Margot getting into arguments with the Von Dons, do you? Margot never gets into an argument with anyone. Margot's perfect. I'm not perfect. She's courteous. She keeps her distance, and they respect her for it. Try and be more like Margot. And have them walk all over me, too. No, thanks. They don't walk all over me. Yes, they do. All over you. I'm not afraid they'll walk over you, Anne. I'm afraid you'll walk all over them. <laughs> I don't know what happens to you if I had ever spoken to my mother the way she speaks yes, to me. Yes, mother, no, mother, anything you say, mother. People aren't like that anymore. I can't do everything for you. Margot doesn't do everything. Margot, Margot, that's all I ever hear. Don't be so dramatic. Everything she does is right. Everything I do is wrong. If I talk, I'm rude. If I answer, I'm incompetent. I'm selfish, I'm stupid, I'm cowardly. I'm a complete disappointment. I'll never live up to your expectations, because I'll never be Margot. I don't know how much longer we can go on living like this. You know, Anne, in a few moments, she'll be laughing and joking again. No room, no privacy for any of us. But these people, the way they behave. And your father chooses to shut his eyes to these things. <coughs> I don't even remember how life used to be. Me. Me. At last. It's me. Me, our darling, me. Does everyone have their list? I have. He never fails us, does she, darling? Now you'll get your library book. We want to know 
everything. Won't you stay for supper? No, thank you. Well, there's something we need to talk over with you. Something that needs to be decided immediately. What? What is it, Mr. Crayler? Every time we come, we try to bring a bit of good news. Up here, you can't realize how bad things are. There's a dentist, Alfred Dussel. He's Jewish. He's been living with a Christian woman, but today he asked me if I knew him a safe hiding place for him. He's, he's desperate for a safe address. I promised I would let him know. Of course, me. Absolutely. Dussel. I believe we know him. That's great news, me. Yes, but... Where is he going to sleep? There's so little room. Oh, forgive me. I spoke without consulting you. I was sure that there would be... You're enough. right. It's just that there's so little food. Mr. Van Dyne, I've tried. There are no more rationals to be had. We're seven can eat. Eight can eat as well. I hope so. If we can save even one person, we must. Well, you're right, of course. Yes, definitely. <sighs> Mr. Carlo, will go to meet him. I'll bring him up. Tomorrow. Mother can go jump in a lake. I don't know why I'm taking such a terrible dislike to her. But I can imagine her dying someday. Well, Daddy's death seems inconceivable to me. I know, I know. It's very mean of me. It's how I feel. How Mother would never read this. Anything else I've written. She's not a mother to me. I have to mother myself. When Nan was here, she always stuck up for me. And I turned to in my diary. Sometimes I think that God is trying to, to test me. I'll have to become a good person on my own. Get anyone to advise me. But, but it'll make me stronger in the end. Three and a half months at the annex, and we're eagerly awaiting our latest adventure. What will he be like? Meek says that he's quiet and fine and by all accounts, an excellent dentist. <laughs> He's meeting Mr. Crayler at 11 sharp this morning at a certain place in front of the post office. It's all very exciting and totally nerve-wracking. What if they get caught? Those last few hours on the way to safety are the most dangerous for a Jew going into hiding. went smoothly. Mr. Dussel was at the appointed place at the appointed time. He had to wear Jan's coat over his office jacket so no one would see the yellow star when he came into our building. He was amazed to be brought to the center of Amsterdam rather than into the country where most of the hiding places are. Of course, he had no idea we were right upstairs waiting for him. Mr. Frank? Mr. Otto Frank? I heard you were in Switzerland. A patient of mine told me you'd escaped to Basel, or Belgium, or something. 
That's what they all think. The Nazis included, we hope. We tricked them. We're so glad to have you, Mr. Guppo. All of us are. How can I thank you? Not us, me and Mr. Crailer. Without them, we didn't live. Aren't you scared of me sometimes? <laughs> We're not heroes. Maybe you are too modest. We just don't like the Nazis. Anything about them. Come, Mr. Dussel. Please sit down. You must be worn out. Let's all have a little toast to Mr. Dussel. Cognac. We were saving it in case of illness. But what better way to use it? To Mr. Dussel. We are honored to have you with us. Prost. 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 I believe we know someone in common, Mr. Russell. Oh. <coughs> Dr. Kingsley. We were friends back in Frankfurt. In the old days. What? What is it? Dr. Kinsler was taken last month. Beethoven was dropped. They took the whole block. What is happening outside? Tell us, Mr. Dussel. All over Amsterdam. Jews are disappearing. Some are torn out of bed in the middle of the night. My God, the screams. Children come home from school to find their parents gone. Women come home from shopping to find their families vanished. It's impossible to escape unless you go into hiding. Thousands are being deported. The Blombergs, Professor Hallenstein. God, no! You have five minutes to get ready. Bring only what you can carry in a rucksack. Heard it in the Jewish theater for days, sometimes weeks. And then, Vesterborn, the transit camp. From there, like clockwork, every Tuesday, train leaves for the east. Mr. Dussel, do you know the Gosslers? The daughter Hanley and I have been friends to the four. They, they, they didn't come for them, did they? No, no, not Hanalee! There was a family by the name of... No! I'm sure Mr. Dussel needs to get settled in your separatist. I'm sorry we can't offer you a room of your own. I trust you won't mind sharing home with my daughter. Forgive me for upsetting you. No. You had to tell us. We had to know. And, and why don't you show Mr. Dussel your room? Children don't 
understand that. What do you mean? No one likes to go to the dentist. People make fun of dentists, but believe me, it's no fun for us. Everyone hates us. That's awful. Tell me something. When you're in here, where do I go? In there with all those people? And Mushi. Who's Mushi? Peter's cat. Cat? No one mentioned any cat to me. He has it here? Oh, Mushi's the sweetest cat in the world. You'll love him. I hate cats. They're terrifying. And they give me asthma. <laughs> <laughs> Let us hope so. By the way, Mr. Crayler spoke of his schedule. It's mainly about when we have to be quiet and when we can use the WC. You can use it right now if you'd like. No, thank you. <laughs> you don't know how important the WC is when you're in hiding, when you're scared. I understand. If you don't mind, I think I'll lie down before supper. It helps with the digestion. You rest, Mr. Bessel. I'll try and make you feel comfortable. Good evening. This is Colin Reese Parker with the BBC Radio Europe, November 12th. German forces yesterday entered the unoccupied France, acting quickly in an attempt to counter the sweeping Allied gains along the southern shore of the Mediterranean. Hitler sent armored columns and infantry to Vichy, France. The Vichy regime thereby came to an end, and with it, the final pretense that part of France was a free zone. Thank you. 
broken the bookcase. Take us all away. The train must be on the train going to the east. I yelled terribly loud. Do you think anyone outside heard? I know what you're thinking. I can't help the way I feel. I just don't love her. Yeah. We just don't get along. I hate being cooked up for her. I don't get along with anyone here. Okay, my nightmares. I know everyone hates me for having them, but I can't stop them from coming. We're all having nightmares, Anne. Only you leave them out. Your mother's having them too. Horrible ones. I know them. I'm trying to change. Have a better, finer side. It's as though I'm split in half. It's good, bad. Him, I don't know. I want to be a better person. <coughs> I keep shutting myself off, hiding how I feel. You understand? We've always understood you. And I. You know, you taught me something when we first came here. Me? Remember when we first arrived? How numb Margot and your mother were. I was a wreck of worry. Yeah, with you. That terrible morning. We were skipping around the room, calling it an adventure. You showed me the distinct. Now, whenever I read my Dickens, it takes me to another world. In that world, I feel safe. You have something too a diary. Whenever I see you fill it up, I know you found your world in there. You're lucky, Anne. Lucky? You can write. You can put all your thoughts you can. The house is shaking! Thank <laughs> you. 